From this moment on, she was no longer simply Queen Hatshepsut. She was the Pharaoh Matkara, king of Upper and Lower Egypt. She goes through the complex ritual of coronation here at this place in Thebes at the Temple of Karnak. Complex ritual activity, having to put on the crown, the regalia, even though she's a woman. Transforming herself into a pharaoh entailed certain sacrifices. So if Hatshepsut wanted to take power of all of Egypt, she had to do so as a king, which means that she had to change her femininity, she had to dress as a man, she had to wear a false beard. She had to completely morph herself into a man so that she could take control of this place that revolves around male power. In a single bold thrust, a woman became a pharaoh, equal to, if not more powerful than, King Tut Moses III himself. In a way, you could look at this moment, this coronation, where she takes on the regalia of kingship as her doom, as the thing that ends up bringing her down, as the reason that people have to erase her from history. Some contemporaries said Hatshepsut had seized power unjustly. Some said she was just trying to protect her nation. On their hunt for Hatshepsut's mummy, Hawass and his team have already found one promising candidate in tomb KV-60. Now they're heading up into the hills on the trail of another. We have to go everywhere that we can believe that the mummy was buried. Maybe in the uh, case of mummies, in KV-20, KV-60, all the places that we can smell the queen. Their destination, a remote clifftop cave known as DB-320, concealed deep in the mountains. 